Shalom, Shalom, all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Recha Kadash, the Lord honor to the apostles and elders, the great men of Salem that rule well, labor in the word and doctrine, Shalom and the peace. May that be unto the elect of the nation of Israel. In 1 John, the third chapter, you know, verse 4 is a great, great bit of milk, you know, for really defining what sin is. You know, and a bit of this we shall also explore. So 1 John chapter 3 verse 4 Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law for sin is the transgression of the law. Now we're aware that we're not under the law or we should be aware that we're not under the law as in there's no literal mandate in any land to this day that if you break the law you know there's a judgment for it in that sense for example in Jerusalem you know in if you want to call it the region of Israel, if you want to call it Palestine, you know, going back to the Philistines, which even that, you know, the, the meaning of the word Palestine or the meaning of the word Philistine, look it up in context of the whole, you know, whose land is it, whose line is it anyway. But, you know, there's no way you can go, nowhere, excuse me, you can go on earth and say, well, well this is the land that's holding up the law of the scripts, the scriptures. Because you know, it's not. You've got kosher pork, so called. You've got unclean food. You've got unclean practices. Certainly happening, happening up in that land until today. But that is all prophetic. You know that is all prophecy, as it's written. You know Jerusalem should be trodden down. Of, excuse me. Oh, excuse me. Bless me. Right. Jerusalem will be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles is fulfilled now. The times of the Gentiles, Gentile means nation. So the time of these nations is not uh, uh, right. Gawaya, Gawya, Gawya Kodash. It's not the holy nation. Yeah, but it's these other nations. Alright? Which generally when you read the word Gentiles it will refer to other nations, but you can read it where it does refer to Israel. Now the fact of all the, the tension, the war, the rumors of wars that are going on to this day due to this land is all prophecy, it's all prophetic, right? The Messiah spoke of it in Luke, the 21st chapter, in the context of the falling away, you know, 70 AD, which goes back to the Greek word apostasia, which is where you get the term apostate, right? To fall away the first apostates, <laughs> right? The first apostates, the first fall, you know, but this new one going in from the time of, what is it, 68 to about 72 AD, right, the time the term is 70 AD, right, these drastic events for the nation of Israel, that this would be the beginning of the end, you know, and that's, we'd fall away from our land, you know, and then we'd be more of the colloquial use of apostate, apostasia, we'd fall away from our culture, Right, our practice, our ways of religion, our ways of worship, which again is why we're in this predicament. We fell off because due to sin. So this whole thing, whosoever committed sin also transgresseth the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Right, that links in perfectly. Right, because if we're aware that in this flesh you know, we are incapable of keeping this law perfectly. Right, but we're not incapable of becoming perfected. Right, we can become perfected through our faith, and that's what's beautiful about the, what does it say, the earnest. Is it earnest? Basically, the down payment on the new covenant. Right, the down payment of that promise of life. Right, Yahweh Shai dying, being resurrected, and ascending to make intercession for the elect. In you know the sacrifice for the whole nation of Israel, but only the elect will profit. So we are capable of being perfected in faith. You know, if we truly believe the Yahushua is our worthy sacrifice, you know, and if we can conceive it in our minds that He is a worthy sacrifice for us, if we have the elect, He will be that sacrifice. He will be that covering to perfect us where we fall short. Right. Verse 5 of 1st John chapter 3 says, And ye know, 
and you know that he was manifested to take away our sins and in him is no sin right so when Yahweh came in the flesh he didn't sin right so that's a great example of striving and in fact maintaining the purity what we're aware in the flesh in this captivity we're not going to be able to keep that you know until it's put in our inward parts that goes back to the concept we're exploring recently as well of being the Messiah being that perfect example but then you've got examples of ways to follow that example you know Yahweh Shai is, a, is the perfect example for Israel excellent we know that but the certain things Yahweh Shai did for example give his whole give his life for the basically to take away sin so we just read that right he will be he will be made that. Now we're giving examples of you know, the greatest love you, you can give is giving, laying down your life for your friends. You know, no greater love there is than this. Yeah. But if we are to lay down our life, we don't do it in the same way. Us laying down our life individually is not going to give a chance of repentance and remission of sins to Israel. You know. But it's giving that you know that sacrifice to let the word go up. So that sometimes. For example, Apostle Paul said, Be followers of me, even as I am of the Messiah, even as I am of the Messiah. That fills us with that, that full. Let me think very carefully how to word this, but I don't want to downplay what Yahweh Shai did, but I'm trying to put it in the context of we can't do every single act that Yahweh Shai did. There's certain things were uniquely for him so Apostle Paul may give a great example of how to follow Yahweh if we do exactly as Apostle Paul did in certain aspects you know rebelling against the you know those that were going off at the time which he was you know, for a long time persecuting the church he speaks about in his, in his epistles you know when we first introduced to Apostle Paul before he is he does become sent away you know we understand what his role was in the pharisees you know but that again is a perfect example of the lord's mercy and an example of the lord using a man in that position to then you know see who, who seemed this man would never follow the messiah in fact he killed he physically killed you know people you know, because it's Stephen. He was, he was involved in that physically harming people due to you know, his misunderstanding of the doctrine. Now Paul was given great mercy. The majority of the New Testament is either penned or spoken by Apostle Paul. Right? A, a great deal of the ministry Apostle Paul did, he, as he sp spoke on it, you know, I keep under myself, I keep under my body. That's me, after I've, I've preached to others, I myself should become a castaway. So we always maintain lowly in spirit with humility. You know, and you have to imagine that even knowing that the, the Lord is merciful, that, that that's gotta be a heavy thing to, to weigh on a man's spirit, you know, knowing that you've you've put to death those that were the co the correct servants of the Heavenly Father. Right, because Paul was zealous for the Lord, as he also speaks about. You know, zealous for the Lord, to the fact that he thought he was doing it, he was doing the right thing. You know, and you have which I speak on it, I think in John the 16th chapter, verse 2, I want to say, you know, the time will come, those, <laughs> those who want to put you to death think they're doing the most high service. You know? And don't think that that's over now. <laughs> right? There's persecution to come, there's Jacob's trouble to come, there's the apex of the third war to come right things are heating up of course and you know, no one's never going to deny that especially in the body but to say that you know we're all the way there would be wrong of course so first john chapter 3 verse 6 whosoever abideth in him sinneth not whosoever sinneth hath not seen him neither known him right so that's the thing there's a thing of, I'm using that word thing a lot. That's the thing, there's the thing of it, our transgressions being forgotten. <laughs> right?
right forgiveness being granted. Right? They say don't take it for granted. But it says in the book that the Lord granted repentance to the Gentiles. You know, we would fit that Gentiles now, you know, being cast away from my heritage. Most Jake didn't come up knowing, right, you're an Israelite, right, you see it goes back to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, right, these are the curses upon us, we're in captivity due to our disobedience. That's simple things, that's meant to us coming into this book. You know, baby steps, that's, you know, we should have re realistically, we should have been taught that from birth in an ideal world. You know, of course, not going into slavery and everything like that, it's all part of the Lord's decree, it's all part of the journey, the story, the script. The Heavenly Father, we understand that, but speaking idealistically, you know, for example, in the kingdom, all our children will be growing up in the knowledge of the Heavenly Father. It says in the New Covenant, you know, no one's going to be going to teach you, hey, hey, yo, brother, da -da 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 -da, trying to break something down to you about the Heavenly Father, because it says, Jeremiah 31, Hebrews 8th chapter, all shall know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them. Right, so no one's going to be setting up camp in the kingdom. <laughs> you know, you're not going to have video epistles in the kingdom trying to give you a breakdown on, on the name of the Heavenly Father. You're not going to have Israelites in the kingdom calling upon the name of Haya. And then over here you've got one calling upon Yahuwah. And then, you know, the Heavenly Father's name is Yahweh. And that's what it is. You know, we know that by faith. And in the kingdom, we shall see. <laughs> we shall see. Right, first John chapter 3 verse 7 Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as even as he is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. And that's the thing, the Lord, the Lord is even going to put down death. You know? Eternal life means eternal life, brothers. As it's written eternal life, life everlasting, right, these things are for real, the Lord put down enemies under his feet, the last enemy has put down will be death, yeah, the Lord will put death under his feet, and Israel will not experience death, right, because death is a byproduct of sin, and in the kingdom, you know, sin is going to be done away with for Israel, right, there's not going to be transgression of the law because it will be written on our inward parts. So the Lord really is going to do away with death. You know, death will be expired. <laughs> death will die <laughs> for Israel, at least. You know, because the other nations, although they'll be under the, the hand, the rulership of Jacob, of Israel, you know, they're still going to have, they're going to be as us now. You know, really striving, really trying. Because you know, there will be in that day, you know, statutes, judgments, commandments enforced. As I was speaking on earlier, Right at the start, you know, there's no land today with the, they say the law goes forth from, which that's a prophetic concept of Israel being brought back to the land. So then you have to ask, well, who's that in the land today? You know, and we've already answered that, exploring Luke, the 21st chapter, around the 24th verse, the times of the Gentiles. These are the Gentiles, you know, some of them. As in some of the Gentiles. And there is going to be a scattering of Israel in all nations, you know, whether that upsets people. How can you look like that and be like, wake up, <laughs> wake up. You're still in that matrix, man. You have, and you go into that word matrix, born, right? And maternity, you need to be born again. <laughs> you need to have a new matrix, man. You know, he looks, he's definitely an E. I can tell by the way he looks. Carnal ass, <laughs> carnal ass jakes, man. Carnal ass ninjas. Yeah? Some carnal ass niggas, man. But, you know, these were all the conditions, these were all the, you know, hexes, the witchcraft put, put out from E. You know, the idea that we're so attached to an external appearance. You know, but the Lord told you, you know, man looketh upon the, the outward appearance of man, but the Most High looketh upon the heart of man. You know, the Most High looketh upon the heart of man. So, you could look like E and be righteous, you can look like J can be E. Or you can be J, it can be wicked. You know, it's about your heart. <laughs> it's not about, you know, what, what your shade. <laughs> you know, you're just trying to do the devil's work in, in inverse. It don't work like that. You know, you have, to, you have to go all the way. You know, you don't do the same evil back. <laughs> you have to do good, man. You know? 
So, whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. You know, a long rambling, you know, I pray it's edifying, exhorting to some, or at least one, you know, and I'll, and I'll be happy with that. You know, but remember Yahweh Shai's mission, Yahweh Shai's purpose, and then ours in return, what Yahweh Shai did for us, and therefore what we rightfully, righteously should do in response. You know, Yahweh Shai did for us. So we ought to be that living sacrifice in, again, a similar manner. That being said, all praises unto Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rechah Kudash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that rule well and labor in the word and doctrine and Shalom, meaning peace. May that be La Bahaya. May that be unto the elect. Until next video, Lord willing, Shalom.